Okay, in our last video, you got to see how to create a cumulative frequency distribution uh, using a frequency distribution table. Uh, and the cumulative frequencies are really just, it's the frequency of observations or the number of observations that are uh, less than or equal to some threshold value of x. So we pick a threshold value of x, uh, whatever that value happens to be, and then we ask how many observations fall at or below that particular value. And in this way it's just a running total uh, from the minimum value of the distribution on up to whatever your threshold happens to be. Um, so we saw an example with, with frequencies uh, in the last video, but this can be extended to proportions and percentages. We can do this with proportions and percentages as well. And the nice thing is that the process is exactly the same. So we'll do this with proportions uh, to show you how to do it. When we've got our data set that we used in the previous video, uh, where we've got the uh, frequency of, we'll say it's it's goods sold, items that we sold out of our store, and these items cost either $1, $10, or $100, um, and we sold 12 items. And so we've got the frequency distribution here, and I'll go ahead and start by calculating the proportion uh, for each of these values of x, where x is goods sold. So the proportion is simply going to be 3 divided by 12, this is uh, 0.25, and then 5 divided by 12 is 0.42. I have to admit I cheated. I used a calculator and wrote this down ahead of time. So um, you can go ahead and verify my results. Uh, but 4 divided by 12, that gives us a proportion of 0.33. And if you add these proportions up, they'll add up to 1.00. OK, so now we've got the proportions for each category for each value of x, and we know that um, the proportion of goods sold that cost $1 was 0.25, and the proportion of goods sold that cost $10 was 0.42, and the proportion of goods sold that cost $100 was 0.33. So now we can go ahead and create our cumulative proportion column. This is a new column in our data set, and we'll call it cumulative CP for cumulative proportion. And this is calculated in exactly the same way, the same type of process that we use to calculate the cumulative frequencies. So we'll start with the low value of x, so that's $1, and we'll assume that we have zero observations, to, or zero proportion, a proportion of zero to start with, and we're going to add to that this first proportion. Okay, so 0.25 and that's going to equal 0.25. So we get 0.25 here. Now for the next category, we'll start with the 0.25 that we have, and we'll add to that the 0.42 in the next category of x. So 0.42, and we'll get 0.25. Six, seven. Okay, so, oops, 0.67. And then for the last category of x, the last value here, we'll start with our 0.67, and we'll add to that the 0.33 for this value, 0.33, and that gives us 1.00. And so we get 1.00. And now we've got a running total of proportions from the lowest value of x on up to the highest. And we can ask the same kinds of questions that we asked when we had cumulative frequencies. We can ask questions, for example, what proportion of uh, the sample ha had uh, was worth less than or equal to $10? So what proportion of goods sold were worth ten dollars or less. And we can look at, here's the ten dollar category, and we'll come across to our cumulative proportion column, and we can see that's a 0.67. So the proportion of goods sold that cost uh, ten dollars or less was 0.67. We could do another example here and ask what was the proportion that was greater than ten dollars. 
And here we can use the same trick that we learned with cumulative frequencies. And we can start with our total proportion. Since we want to know what proportion was greater than $10, we'll start with the total proportion of 1. And we'll subtract from that the proportion of goods sold that were equal to or less than $10. And this will give us 0.67, and that will give us 0.33. And so that is the answer here, is that the proportion of goods sold that were greater than $10 is 0.33. And we can verify that by looking. There's only one category above $10, and the proportion here was, in fact, 0.33. So this is a basic example of how to calculate cumulative frequencies and then do some work with those cumulative frequencies to answer basic questions about the data. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll move this up and we'll get you another example um, using the same data set that we had used before. Um, again, we've got our frequency distribution here for our variable z. Um, and the Z ranges in value from 1 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There were 15 observations in our data set, and we've got the frequencies here. So we'll go ahead and do another example here where we calculate the proportion for each category of Z. And so we've got 2 divided by, fif two divided by 15 is going to be 0.13. 4 divided by 15 is 0.27. 5 divided by 15 will be 0.33. 3 divided by 15 will be 0.20. And 1 divided by 15 is 0 0.07. Okay, if you add these up, we should add up to 1. And now we're ready to go ahead and calculate our cumulative proportions. Well, we've got the proportion of observations here that fall into each category uh, or each value of z. And so now we can create a new column in our data set, which will give us the cumulative proportions. And it's the same process that we saw before. We're going to start with this low value the lowest value of z, which is 1. And we'll assume that we start with a proportion of 0. And we'll add to that 0.13, which is the proportion for the first category here. And so we get 0.13. Then we'll take 0.13 and we'll add 0.27, which is the next category. And we'll end up with uh, 0.40. Now, we'll, to that 0.40, we'll add 0.33 and we get 0.73 and then to 0.73 we'll add 0.20 and we get 0.93 and then we'll take 0.93 and we'll add 0.07 0.07. So 0.93 plus 0 0.07 and we'll get 1.00. Okay. And here, so now we've got our cumulative frequencies or cumulative proportions for this particular frequency distribution. And just to make a little extra room, I'll go ahead and erase these calculations here. Uh, but we can start asking the same kinds of research questions that we were asking before, and we can use our cumulative proportions to answer some interesting questions. So, um, we could say, what's the proportion of observations in our data set that are, have values less than 4? Okay. So what, what is the proportion that have values less than 4? To answer that question, then we'll look at the category, the value 4 for our variable z, and we'll come across to the cumulative proportion column, and we'll see that, ah, there are 0.93, the proportion uh, 0.93 of our observations have values of 4 or less. Okay. 
Now, we could ask another question. Uh, we could say, what is the proportion of observations that have values of uh, three or less? And again, we would come over to our table and we'd look at the value uh, of three for our variable z. And then we come across to the cumulative proportion column and we'd say, ah, in this data set, the proportion of observations that have values of three or less is 0.73. Okay. Now, I said that we could do this with percentages, and we can. Um, and we could do that, we could create a cumulative percentage column. Remember, if you convert, to convert a proportion into a percentage, we just need to move a decimal place two spaces to the right. If we did that for each of these proportions, move the decimal place two spaces to the right, we would have the percentages. Well, it works the same way for cumulative proportions. We can move the, the decimal place two spaces to the right, and our cumulative percentage would be the following, 13, 40, 73, 93, and 100. 100% 100 would be the final cumulative percentage. Um, and so we could do the same thing with cumulative percentages and then we could ask these same kinds of questions and if we wanted to we would say what is the um, what is the for example the what is the cumulative percentage at or equal to f or at or below four and we could just move our decimal places over here and we'd end up with 93 percent right we'd look at our four category and we'd come across and see there's our cumulative percentage the same thing with the cumulative percentage at or below three we would end up with here's our three category and we come across and we find that it's 73. And we could also ask the same kinds of uh, slightly more complicated questions that we saw in uh, our previous examples. We could ask uh, questions like, um, what proportion, let's say, what proportion of observations are greater than two? And to do that, since we're dealing with the proportion now, we could come to our cumulative proportion column. We know that we want to know what proportion is greater than two. And so when you see this greater than, you should think, okay, we're going to start with the total number, which is 1. The proportion, total proportion is always going to be 1. And from that, we're going to subtract the proportion of observations that are a 2 or less. Here it's 0 0.40. So 0 0.40 of our data set has a value of 2 or less. And if we subtract that from 1, we'll get the proportion that are greater than 2. And so we, we can see that that's... 0 0.60. We could do the same thing with uh, asking what is the proportion greater than 3? And we would start with our total proportion, 1.0. We would subtract from that the cumulative proportion for the 3 category, which is 0.73. And we'd find that that proportion then is what is left over is 0.27. And so out of our data set, uh, there is a proportion of 0.27 that has a value uh, that's greater than 3. And we can go ahead and do this. We could convert these into cumulative percentages. And we could say the cumulative percentage uh, or the percentages for these groups would be 60% uh, and 27%. And these aren't these aren't cumulative percentages. But if we wanted to convert them to just percentages instead of proportions, the answers to these questions would be 60 and 27 percent. And so this is just an example of working with uh, cumulative percentages and cumulative proportions in the same way that we were working with cumulative frequencies.